we've uh, we've now reached um, the kind of final part of our of our episode today, uh, and as always, we are kind of winding down just to get some religious sustenance from uh, <laughs> our, our dear esteemed guests Sayyid Ali and Nawab. Many thanks for your time. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi How are you Sayyid? Alhamdulillah. Good. Thank, thank, you. thank you for joining it's, us uh, again. It's, it's Friday um, and we're looking forward to the weekend and I guess we're going to take some, some of your time to discuss some key issues. Um, as, as we mentioned, uh, this segment is really covering some miscellaneous topics that aren't really talked about much in society. Maybe it's because let's keep it hush hush or maybe it's because people are uneducated about it. I think one of the main hush-hush issues that we have in our society is actually upbringing, um, but actually parental parents and their responsibilities to their children, mm. but from a gender perspective, because of course our parents came from a certain country and they obviously were taught in a certain way, but they came into this country and this country, they teach their children in a different way and then so there's a mix of societies here and it's hard for the parents to keep hold of their children mm. but at the same time they need to kind of really let go a bit because they need to get into society it's a difficult issue to touch to, to touch so i guess what we wanted to but discuss I, I, this always, I will say that, that we also do know that generation to generation is different mm. how our parents treated us we also shouldn't be you know our children are from a different generation so we have different so what's any we should Go to the yeah. <laughs> specialist here. <laughs> thank you. Uh, again, thank you for uh, inviting me over and uh, uh, allowing me to discuss with you this very yeah. important and sensitive issue. Again, one of the beauties of uh, Islam as a religion is that uh, it has uh, touched upon this subject uh, very accurately, mm. if I can say. Mm. It, it has studied all the different aspects of upbringing and it has given us the answers in detail. Okay. So, uh, taking it from narrations from the Holy Prophet and Ahlul Bayt salam, to actually observing how the Holy Prophet or Ahlul Bayt, members of the, uh, the Holy Household, uh, dealt with their youngsters, how they brought them up. So, uh, Alhamdulillah, uh, the, the school of thought of Ahlul Bayt and, and the Shia specifically, they are not, uh, they have not been neglected in regards with the way that uh, Islam as a religion advises them or teaches them how to uh, br uh, bring up their children. Uh, one of, I wanted to start with this beautiful narration, is that uh, the Holy Prophet of Islam, Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Wasallam says, Rahimallahu abawain a'ana Oh, in another narration, mm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring down his blessings and rahmah upon those parents or the parent that helps and supports their child into obeying them. Mm. Because at times there are parents who unfortunately get up to certain acts or deal with their children or behave in a certain way towards their children that the child looks at them in a negative way. Yeah. And once they look at them in a negative way, they start doing taking that wrong things. Yeah. They mm. start making mistakes. Mm. Yeah. And, and the parent tends to see that, okay, this child is making a mistake. What was the reason? I wasn't the reason because I'm the parent. Yeah. I, I'm trying to teach this child. But what they, they fail to realize is that because of my way of speaking to them, or because of the way I am behaving towards them, yeah. they have committed such an act. Oh. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through the Holy Prophet says, Allah will bring down his blessings upon the parent that, that helps and supports their child to okay. obey the parent. And the same, same wise, there is another, another narration that says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring down his wrath oh. wow. upon the parent that commits an act that the child will disobey them. Mm. So, I, yeah, yeah, no, I was going to say, um, what we're all parents here, so, um, and we've all had our own experiences, but in terms of um, people that you know, are raising young children, what is the way of the Ahubayt, the Holy Prophet, in, in raising their children? Because you know, we have these debates about beating your child and yeah, you discipline. Know, the discipline levels. What was the path of Ahubayt? Again, Ahlul Bayt salam, and Islam in general, they have come and divided the, 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 the years or the age nice. years of the child into three different categories. Sayyid on Sab'a Sinin, Wazir on Sab'a Sinin, 
wa sadiqun samasi so islam comes and says that he's a he's a he's a king for himself from the day that he's born until seven years that <laughs> he, whatever he wants you have to give him yeah. whatever he says you have to say yes sir yeah. this is the way islam yeah. wants you to teach this child why because this child has not reached that mental yeah. Um, aspect for you yeah. to come and say right, wrong, do yeah. this, don't do that. He doesn't yeah. understand. He, he, he sees toys he wants to play. Yeah. Yeah. He, d he cannot distinguish between right and wrong. So the second seven years, he's a wazir. You have to come and start advising, and advising. him. Yeah. Or you, the parent is a wazir to them. Yeah. That you as a wazir to a, a, a master or a king, how do you advise them? They, you see them committing certain acts, you have to advise them. Mm. You see them doing certain things, come to them with a nice manner. Mm. Sit down. Befriend them. It's, 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 a, it's a very important issue that mm. uh, the parents understand that at some stage of their child, their son or daughter's life, they have to step backwards from the aspect, from the frame of being a parent and, and step yeah. inwards to becoming a friend. Yes, yeah. beautifully said, yeah. Oh. So because a friend sometimes, as we were discussing, um, a friend was sometimes can affect or have a, a positive impact on the life of that child more than the parent. Yeah. Mm. And as we know... And um, it's, it's also challenging, isn't it? And I'm sorry, mm. you know, I know you're going to go to the next stage, but it is challenging in the, these countries where children are taught to, you know, if your parents speak to you, course, you know, um, support line, you know, it's not like how it is in the eastern side. So how, you know, these are all things that parents have to consider. So while you're saying the second stage is the wazir, where do parents draw a line when that child is crossing certain lines and sort of speaking back and being disobedient? That perhaps you know you wouldn't, as a parent, want to be spoken to. Of course, if the parents themselves they stick to the guidelines that mm -hmm. Islam has set for them, they will never fall into into areas where the child will feel they need to call their support services and so mm. to mm. and get help from outside the house. Yeah. Yeah. But it's only that time that the parent commits that mistake that this, the child sees. Okay, this is a mistake. Yeah. So where does the parent or how do the parents distinguish or draw the red line in regards with the behavior of the child? And of course. Um, the community or the society around them, they, they will understand that uh, this is the parent who is trying to educate. Yes. And they want the good for their son or daughter. Um, it's when they um, come to uh, commit acts which endangers their life and the life of the, of the family. Mm. Or they, they want to go out, outside the house and befriend individuals yeah. who, are, who are dangerous to them and to yeah. the family. Or take, uh, for example, um, uh, attend events or mm. attend programs or uh, eat certain yeah. foods or drinks. They don't know that this is negative or this is bad for them. Mm. But the parent distinguishes. But it's always very important mm. that you don't use force yeah. or pressure that, to educate your yeah. children. What's, regarding what's, certain how would then the difference be between the genders? And, and because, of course, from, from our perspective, the boys are seen, they, they, it looks like they're allowed to do what they want, when they want, uh, unless they, are, uh, they have to be home at a certain time. They can go out with their friends, they play football, whatever they, w whatever they want they can do. But when it comes to the girl, there's so many different measures that are put in place. If she wants to go out, it has to be once a month. She has to be with certain people. Her parents have to go with her. So is that a cultural thing, or does Islam actually place a difference between the discipline, between the genders of a, of a, of a male and a female? Again, we have riwayat from Ahl al-Bayt that says Al-Bintu uh, Rahma Wal-Waladu Ni'ma Fa'ar-Rahmatu Yuthabu Alayha Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the female is a blessing from me to you okay. and you will be rewarded on that blessing mm. and the, the son, the male is a, is a, is a ni'ma uh, is a ni'mah that I will ask you for, for this ni'mah. So right. the way that you bring up your son specifically mm -hmm. needs to be in a way that he, when he grows up, he has to understand the responsibilities mm -hmm. that fall upon him and how he is going to be required to get up to certain acts that uh, the whole community will rely on. Okay. But in the case of the female, if we go back a little bit in time, in history, mm -hmm. we see how... Uh, in times of, uh, of Jahiliya, the pre-Islamic era, how they used to deal with the male and how they used to look at the female. Mm. Here, Islam came and emphasized that the female, it's very important that 
the, the community and the family, the immediate family, look up to the female as they look up to the, to the male. Because they used to see that the male is something positive in the, in the clan, in the tribe. They're, they grow up, they become strong, their power against um, other tribes, other clans, they go out, they fight, they, they work, they bring food, they bring money. But the female was always looked down upon, and this is wrong. Mm. Islam came and emphasized that this, the half of the community is the male and half of the community is the female. Yeah. The female has a responsibility. So here the parents, they should be very careful once they are in that process of bringing up their children. Especially when they have siblings, when they have children, same male age. and female, yeah. that are the same age. Mm. Because th they always look. Mm. How is my mother or how is my father speaking to my brother? Are they speaking to me the same way? Or when they bring gifts, or when they bring, for example, something, especially the daughter, when the father comes from outside. Wow. She is the first one that comes and, and, yeah. and receives the father. Yeah. I have experienced this myself. Yeah. I have a four-year-old, a daughter. And I have an 11 to 12 year old son. Yeah. They are occupied. I'm not saying that they're yeah. neglecting their rights. The yeah. They are occupied yeah. with doing yeah. something yeah. else. But that is that four year old. She's oh, very young, but she understands. Yeah. She comes to the door and she says, Daddy. Yeah. She welcomes, she receives in her own way. I think for a daughter, her father is you know, the biggest role model in her life in terms of yeah. that love. And I remember my own father, I was one and a half, he said, run to the door when yeah. he would arrive. Yeah. It's, it's that natural yeah. instinct for a daughter. So I'm not sure you're blessed to have that in your home. Alhamdulillah. So he, again, Islam comes and says that the, the, the way that you bring up your son and daughter mm. will show when they, are, when they grow up. Yeah. If you have done a good job of yes. bringing up uh, that son and daughter, especially uh, but by not real, letting them realize that you are differentiating between yeah. them. Of course, the mother here, Islam, advises the parents to um, uh, separate or to divide the responsibilities mm. when it comes to upbringing the children. If you have a daughter, let the mother mm. take care mm. of that aspect. Of course, the father is very important for him to have a place in her life. Yeah. But there are certain issues that the mother needs yeah. to take care of. Especially adolescent age, yes. isn't it? Uh, yeah. Yes, yes, of course, Ahsantum. And, and the, 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 the son, the father has to take yes. care of. Okay. The mother has to do her yeah. uh, duties and her obligation towards the son. the son. But Islam comes and says, okay, there are some situations that you need to leave the mother to deal with. Yeah. And there are some situations that no, leave the father to deal with. So I Islam does divide uh, uh, the responsibilities, but here there are no uh, there are no levels as to or priorities to say that the female mm. is uh, has less priority than the male at home or has more priority. No, Islam looks at the the, the male and the female in the same way. That's beautiful. Brilliant. Brilliant. Um, I think that I'm just going to touch on that. You know, you, it's and that's why it goes back to the family unit is so important because those children. I've seen children that are opposite genders close to the girl, will be close to her father before, say, 10 years old. The boys will be perhaps mummy's boys. And then they get to adolescence, and then they go towards, the, then, you know, I've got friends that say, my daughter doesn't even like me, you know, she's with her dad. And I said, just wait till she's in her adolescence. She will need you as a mother to guide her through that stage. And boys need their fathers. And that's why it's so important that families are kept together. I know it's a different issue um, in terms of separations and divorces happening, but it impacts your children and their future. And like you said, at the end, when those children become young adults, you can look back and see what went sort of perhaps not right in their life, that they became maybe damaged adults or, you know, not got the support from the parent that was perhaps absent or, you know. And I think as a community, there's a lot of support required there for those children that uh, perhaps... Of course. Of course, the community and the society plays a very important role mm. in supporting and aiding the parents to bring up their children. At the time of Rasulullah and Ahl Bayt salam, Rasulullah educated the society in a way when they saw the son of a companion or the child of a companion doing certain things wrong, they, they intervened in a specific mm. way, in a specific manner. Or they, they, they used to uh, get up to certain acts that the children in the community or in the society would learn from that act. And this was the case in, mm. uh, in the, in the uh, early stages of, of uh, our lives or the par our parents, they lived in a, in a community or a society back home mm. where uh, the community uh, actually done what they were required to do. 
because uh, they realize that I as a friend yeah. or I as a shop owner, that I am neighbor to that family, yeah. I also have a responsibility to look after yeah. my friends or my neighbor's Definitely. son and daughter. Yeah. If they used to notice that the son or daughter is is getting up to mischief or mm. or wrongdoings, they used to inform the parents yeah. or they used to come and deal with it yeah. in a specific way. So here the community have to play their role. That's a very yeah. important point actually, yeah. because I think as parents, you you know you may be busy with work and you know home life, and you don't always see what your children get up to. Sometimes so you just need another pair of eyes. You do, and I think it's really important. To beautiful points you raise there. Um, thank you again. I think we've come to the yeah, end of the show, have, yeah, and yeah, I think yeah. the overall message I got from that was that you know treat your children with love, mercy, respect, mm. and inshallah, with the guidance that our have given us, and you know that's. Um, well, thank you so much. I think, I think as a three pillars of upbringing is the 777. Oh, that's, yes. that's, for me, that's perfect. Yes. You know, and as I said, years. it's a very sensitive issue that yeah. needs more time. Yeah, but yeah, unfortunately, yes. we'll run out yes. of time. Seven years as a king, seven years as a, a, What's the last a advisor, seven? and seven What's years as a friend. Friend. Yeah. Friend that's when you want to you wanna beat them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm appreciate kidding. your time, Sayed. <laughs> uh, you. Of course, myself and Zara really appreciate your time. And we appreciate the time of the viewers. Uh, it's Friday, so enjoy the day and enjoy your weekend. Uh, and inshallah, we'll see you in the next episode. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.